Hey there, this video will go over the middle class in the game Hegemony. Let's start by familiarizing ourselves with the player board. Now, if you have played the capitalist class or the working class of Hegemony, then a lot of the elements here would be familiar, but I'm going to assume that you're starting from square one. So let's go through each portion of this. At the top of the board is the population track, and that tracks how many workers there are for the uh, middle class team. So they start with 10. Two of them are here in capitalist class locations at the shopping mall. Uh, three of them are here at the technical university. Two of them are at the middle class um, businesses, the doctor's office and the convenience store. And three of them start here in the unemployed workers area. Now for the middle class, they get to choose one skilled worker to be in the unemployed area to start. So you see here uh, the that represented by this uh, different coloration on the board. In addition to that, uh, you would draw two cards from the immigration deck and whatever you get uh, for the middle class worker, that would be the other ones you get. So I drew two, one of them was gray, one of them was purple. So those are the additional ones, uh, the purple, gray. Uh, so this is similar to what the working class does, but again, uh, you're the middle class, so you're not worried about them. So uh, that's how many you have, um, uh, the amount of workers. Uh, you can get up to 30 if you max it out. But in addition to the uh, amount of workers you have, underneath you have the population. So when you have 10 or 11 workers, you have a population of three. If you go up to 12, then you have a population of four and so on. Uh, as you go higher up, you have a higher population. And so some of the elements that we talk about a little bit later will get into the significance of that. The prosperity track is one of the ways that the middle class can earn points. So as they get different goods, they can become more prosperous and they can move the cylinder up uh, the, through the prosperity track and gain more points. These will be victory points toward the end of the game. So uh, that is one of the routes that they can go to earn lots of points to make uh, sure that they have the most points and win. So in addition to that, at the bottom, they also have the ability to sell goods that they have produced. So down here, they can store some food, some luxury, uh, some health care, and some education that they can sell. All right, so they can store eight at any given time uh, and try to sell it to the uh, working class or they can uh, sell it uh, on the export market but um, they have that space. So that is the, the majority of the board. They also have space for the money they make, the income, and uh, goods and services. Uh, really, if you're gonna have the influence uh, tokens down here, and if there is anything else that would fit in the goods and services, they can go in that location. But that is the board for the middle class. Uh, in addition to that, they are going to have uh, three um, businesses available for them to buy at any time. So they're going to be there and available. But we'll get more into that as we get into the actions for the middle class. Each class has some very helpful rule aids that go along with them. So there's this larger rule aid that goes more in depth. And frankly, it is very similar to the actual rule book, but uh, simplified just a little bit. If anyone ever has any questions about what is written on here, they can check the rule book and it might go a little bit more in depth. But this rule aid does a very nice job getting most of the information that players need uh, to help them understand what they need to do for the different tasks and also have it readily available right in front of them so each player can be reading their own rule aid uh, as they uh, are waiting for the other players to go so they can understand what they are going to do. In addition to that, they have their own player aid that's a very simplified version of each of the things that they can do for the actions. And on the back side, it's got their scoring and their taxation. So uh, between these two, the, each player has lots to work with, even if they walk into the game without much knowledge. But we're going to walk through each of these just so we can understand what each of these 
uh, tasks that uh, the, the middle class can do uh, would be. So let's start with the preparation phase. So phase one is the preparation phase. And this does not happen in round one, but it happens in rounds two, three, four, and five. So the first thing that would happen in the preparation phase is if uh, the middle class has taken out any loans, they need to pay uh, five uh, cash as interest on that loan. And um, that's gonna happen every turn. So if they have any loans, they have to pay that. They have to drop their prosperity by two spaces. Okay, so if you're moving the prosperity token up each round, uh, you're able to maybe get some more victory points along the way, but each round you also have to drop it by two. So you're making progress up, you have to pull back a little bit each round. Okay, so uh, that is something that has to happen at the beginning of each round. Uh, they have to draw action cards. So you start the game with seven, all right, and uh, after uh, each round, you will have played five. So you are able to do five actions uh, each round, and in doing so, you either play a card or you're gonna discard a card to do that, and we'll circle back to that in a few minutes. But uh, right now, just understand that you draw five action cards to replenish the ones that you've used. You can reveal new companies. You can discard any of the companies from your market that is near your board. So currently you've got three. If you wanna get rid of any of these companies, you can get rid of one of them. You can uh, discard two of them or all three of them and replace any ones that you want to get rid of. And then finally, you can get new workers and adjust population. You would add an unskilled worker and a skilled worker of your choice to the unemployed workers area. So you can assess what is on the board uh, already, what businesses are there, both for the, uh, the capitalist player, as well as yourself, and any public companies that what might be open to. Uh, just use that opportunity to see where could your workers work in the next round uh, as you choose the workers that you get to put out onto the unemployed table, okay? So that is the preparation phase. Those are the tasks that the middle class will do before they move on to the action phase. In the action phase, the players have an opportunity to play cards or discard cards to do different actions. So they will start by uh, getting seven cards. So I'll simulate that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once they have their seven cards, they can either play these cards for the text that's on the bottom of the card or they can discard those cards to do basic actions. Uh, so on the smaller player card, it shows pretty easily side to side, you've got basic actions, and those are the ones that you would have to discard a card to do. So it's either play the card for its text or discard. And then there's also free actions. The basic actions, you can do one per turn so you take a turn and do that and you can do a free action either before you do your basic action or after so you can do one of each each turn okay so let's look through what each of these actions are the first action is to propose a bill and when you propose a bill you are trying to change the laws so that the public policy is gonna be in your favor. Now, the middle class, unlike the other classes, they get to have some fun with this. Because first of all, at the end of the game, they're gonna benefit when the laws are in the middle. So anything that's in the B column here, they are gonna be, uh, they're gonna get extra points for. But in addition to that, because they're sitting in the middle, uh, they are able to benefit from both uh, capitalist-driven policies and 
the uh, working class driven policies. So this player, the middle class, can have the opportunity to do some negotiating and they can uh, try to set things up in a way that will benefit them uh, in that moment in time and they at any point can flip around and go the other direction. So they are not always pushing one direction. So that can be a lot of fun, I think, uh, when all is said and done, having that freedom and opportunity. So the way that a player will propose those changes is to take one of their cylinders and they would say what change they want to make. So let's just say I am proposing this change, okay, make the education uh, go to B. So I would put the cylinder there and then when we get to the election round, uh, we will have a vote and that uh, that proposal, that bill, will be voted on, and we'll just sit, we'll see whether uh, we win or lose in that proposal. Right? If a player wants to call an immediate vote, they can use one of their influence cubes. So if you start with one of these, you can use it uh, and call that immediate vote at that moment. But the downside to doing that is those influence cubes can be very helpful in the actual votes themselves in potentially changing the result of the vote in your favor. So using that influence clue, uh, cube immediately may uh, end up hindering you if you are not able to pass the bill that you are proposing. So that is what you can do with uh, proposing the bill. And um, again, the middle class likes the middle policies, but they've got freedom in going either direction uh, in uh, whichever bills they want to try to support. The second basic action for the middle class is to assign workers and allows you to assign, assign up to three of your workers to companies. So you can move workers from in the unemployed area to companies that are open for them. So right here we've got uh, purple, green, and gray. If there was an opening for these workers to uh, go on to a business, you could choose to put them there. If you do, then you can commit them. And if they are committed, then, uh, so say, let's say we're putting these workers here and then we're committing these workers. When you put them uh, down uh, on their card, and that means that the capitalist player is committed to produce at that location. So these, these workers are gonna produce six for that capitalist player, and the capitalists are also committing to pay the wage. So they're p committing to pay this wage of 20 to those workers. So when you assign them, you can commit them. Uh, it's a contract between both parties, right? So at the beginning of the game, it's strategic to think about which of these workers would you be able to put onto businesses right away. The third option is to build a company. So again, you have this market above your board and you can decide what you want to build. So in this case, uh, perhaps they would want to build a fast food restaurant. It costs 20. So they would have to use their 20 and you know pay the money and that is gonna go off the board entirely and then they can use the fast food restaurant. In conjunction with uh, what we had talked about with the committing workers, okay, if I was to build this first, now I have a place for my workers that I have uh, on the unemployed workers to then potentially move them and co commit them to my own business and do my own production in the next turn. So that is something you could do. Think about who's unemployed and what you have in your market to be able to make use of uh, your businesses and your workers to have efficient production. So that is the build company. You just uh, build off of the market that you have. The next option is to sell to the foreign market. And in this case, uh, you have exports. And as long as you have enough goods that you've produced, you can sell for the prices that are on the export card that is uh, on the on the board. So uh, you can evaluate whether you want to sell there. If you do so, take note that this says for each transaction performed, you gain a victory point. So uh, it could be beneficial to sell on the export mon mar market, not just for the money, but also getting victory points. 
If you buy goods and services, you can buy from up to two sources that are selling it, and you can buy as many resources as your current population. When it comes to where you can buy them from, uh, you can see helpfully here what the capitalist class can sell, what the middle class can sell, and what you can buy from the foreign market as well as the state. So uh, if you buy from yourself as the middle class player, so you have goods for sale on the bottom of your board, uh, you could purchase it. Well, you're gonna be paying yourself, so you can basically take them and use them for free, and then the other classes can't get a hold of them from you. So when they're on this spot on the bottom of your board, uh, the working class could also purchase your goods from you, but once you get them for your own goods and services, then they're yours, and the working class can't get access to them. So each round, uh, you're gonna need enough food to feed your population. So that's something you're gonna wanna think about uh, as you move down the line. So if your population is three, uh, you're gonna need three food at some point in the round. If later on in the game you get uh, up to population six, you'll need six food. So you're gonna have to consider whether you wanna purchase that as you're going along. Also, when we get to the free moves, you'll see that you're able to make use of the other goods uh, for your benefit when it comes to uh, uh, prosperity and victory points. So you, you, by collecting those goods and services, you are going to benefit yourself in terms of collecting those victory points as well. For the extra shift, uh, you can use workers at one of your own companies and commit them and allow them to do extra production. Uh, once you have done that, you can uh, get the production from it. Now, two situations here. One is you might have a company that's only got either your uh, workers uh, in two of them, or it's uh, perhaps got your own worker and a worker from the working class. If the working class worker is standing up in that scenario, when you do this, you commit yourself and you commit the worker and you have to pay their wage, the eight that you would have to pay them, um, and you would get the full production, you get all three. But let's say we have a situation where that working class worker is already committed and they're unable to do more production for you, they, they have something that's taking them out of production, you can still do your extra shift but it would only be your worker getting the two in this situation as opposed to both workers getting uh, the entire three. Uh, but in that situation, you also don't have to pay the worker if they are not doing production for you. The final basic action is to apply political pressure. And what you would do then is you would take three of your yellow voting cubes and you would put them into the hegemony bag to give you a higher percentage of a uh, chance that your cubes will be pulled out. Let's look at the free actions that the middle class has available. The first one is to use healthcare. And in this situation, you would use the healthcare up to the amount that you have in population. So if I have three healthcare available uh, for three population, I can use it. And if I use it, then I am able to get a new unskilled middle class worker onto my unemployed workers area. If I do that, I've now added to the amount of workers. So I'm going to move the cube up the population track if I do so. And so that is the first thing that you can do. If you use healthcare, you also get one prosperity. So you add one to your prosperity and you get to move your victory point token up too. So they get a lot of benefits from the healthcare. The second thing that you can do is to use education. You can spend education tokens equal to your population. And instead of uh, getting a new worker, you can upgrade one of your workers with a new skill. So you have five potential skills that you can give them. So the, the tracks are agriculture, which is green, um, healthcare, which is the white uh, character. Um, orange is going to be education. Uh, purple is going to be the media for influence. And then uh, the last one is going to be luxury, which is blue. 
So to run a business, you need at least one character that is skilled in each of those areas. So you can consider based on what's on the table or what businesses you might potentially uh, put out on the board later, uh, what uh, character you want to upgrade. Now you can upgrade a character who's in the unemployment area. You can upgrade a character who's out on the board. Uh, if a character is gray, they can, or, or they're on a gray location, they can be any color. So you can upgrade them and have them available for later if you want to as well. The, probably the most sensible thing would be to just upgrade somebody who's on the unemployment track and then it's easy to move them onto the place you want later. In addition to that, you can also move um, one higher on your prosperity counter as well. So you can move up and get some victory points from that as well. The third good is to use luxury. So uh, the luxury would be the ones that look like cell phones. They are not just cell phones. It represents entertainment, uh, things that people enjoy. But by using that, it has to be equal to the population. So again, we've got three uh, population and we can use three of these luxury goods. That will allow us to increase our prosperity by one. The next free action is to adjust prices. So uh, underneath each of your goods that you have for sale, you've got prices for each item. You can lower or raise the prices to help yourself. Uh, you can consider what the prices are for other uh, businesses, whether it's the capitalist class prices or whether it is the uh, import market or whatever the state is selling things for. Uh, you want to be competitive. You want to actually sell your goods. Uh, you can lower the price to do so. Now, if you want to hold your goods for yourself and not allow the working class player to get them, uh, raising prices is a way that you can hoard your materials, but you're then not going to get money for the goods that you have. So you have to weigh what's the best price that you can sell your goods for to maximize your profits. The other adjustment you can do is adjusting wages. So for the middle class player, uh, they need to pay working class players uh, if the working class has their workers working in the businesses. When you pay yourself, if you don't have the working class player, so for example, here at the doctor's office, there's only a middle class meeple, a middle class worker, uh, you don't have to pay because you'd just be paying yourself. But in this situation, you have to pay the worker eight. If you want to, you can lower or raise the wages, but the limitation on that is going to be the labor market. You cannot go below what the wage is on the labor market. So right now it's L2, you can't go below that. You can go higher than the uh, current wage, but you can't go lower. So if the policy were to change to L1, then you could lower that wage. But um, currently it's at L2, you have to at least have the middle or go higher. And if the wage got pulled to L3, then everyone would have to pay the highest prices. But uh, you have the ability to adjust within the constraints of what the rules are. Next free move is to swap workers. You can swap employed skilled workers in unskilled slots with other unemployed workers. So uh, going back to the example that I talked about earlier, let's say I had the purple skilled worker in this unskilled slot at the technical university. Uh, in that case, I may want to send that purple worker to work for a media company so that I can open up a new business or at least uh, staff a business that already exists. So in that case, if I've got these other gray unskilled workers, I could take one of them and I could swap out my skilled worker who is in an unskilled location and make sure that they are all where they need to be. And then I would take that person put them in the unemployed spot for now with intent to then later have them go into a business and run it. The next free action is to receive benefits from the state. That's only going to happen in a four player game. So that will be discussed in the state player video. Finally, the last free action is to pay off a loan and it costs 50 to do so. If you pay that 50, you can discard your loan and you are no longer indebted and you'll no longer have to pay five each round and during the preparation phase.
The first part of the production phase is to produce goods and services, and this will happen on your own businesses. Uh, your workers who work for the capitalist company or the estate company, the, those companies will produce, those players will produce with your workers, and uh, we'll talk about wages in a minute, but you will produce on your own businesses. So uh, the businesses that we would be focused on would be these two businesses right here. Uh, when you produce, uh, you produce based on the workers that are there. So this worker uh, on the company, uh, that's the doctor's office, will produce two healthcare. My two healthcare would then come down to the spot that I store my healthcare to try to sell it. At the convenience store, since I have the extra worker, I would get two for my uh, middle class worker and then one extra for the working class worker and get the three down in the location where the food would be stored. Just a reminder, when you produce with working class workers, you need to pay them a wage. So make sure when you get the production, you also pay them whatever the wage is underneath the cube. The next part of the production phase is covering needs. So for the middle class player, you are going to need to cover your needs, meaning you need to have uh, food to give to your population. Uh, currently, my population needs three food, uh, and as I move up the track, I'll need more as my population increases. Now, if you're able to produce enough uh, to the point where you have uh, enough of your own food, you can make use of that or you can buy from different sources to get that food, whether it's you buying from yourself for free uh, to get the food from yourself. You can buy from the capitalist player. Uh, you can buy from the foreign market if necessary to get uh, any remaining food, but you need enough food to uh, feed each of the people in your population. So uh, food should definitely be a high priority for you to acquire throughout the rounds. The final portion of the production phase is to pay taxes. The middle class has two types of taxes, income tax and employment tax. So for the employment tax, you have to pay the employment multiplier times the amount of functional businesses that you have. The employment multiplier is up near the top of the board. There is a cylinder that shows the tax multiplier. So uh, this is going to be, uh, right, it's going to start at five, and it's based on the policies that are on the board. So it, w it starts at one, but then, as you see, you've got these spots that look like that same symbol, all right? And then this one's plus one. All right, and then this one is plus three. So three, four, plus the original one is five. You can't go to zero, so one plus three, one, two, three, plus one, five. So you take that five, and then you multiply it by your functional businesses. So down here, I have two businesses that are functional, so um, five times two is 10. I would pay 10 for that. If you have a business that is not functional, you're not able to produce on it, you have no workers on it, you don't pay this tax on that business. Only if the business is running and functional and getting you a profit. The second type of tax is income taxation. And for this, you need to take the labor market and uh, the taxation policies. So you look up here, Currently, uh, the labor market, number two, is at B, and number three, taxation, is at A. And you use this grid to figure out where you would fall. Okay, so uh, this is going to be 3A, so this column, and 2B is going to be 4. But then you multiply whatever number you come up with times the amount of functional companies that you have. So you have to pay both of these taxes to the state and it will end up in the state treasury for them to use uh, as they need if you have four players or if you don't have four players, then the state treasury will be where money comes out when um, various uh, payments need to be made. During the scoring phase, you don't get direct 
uh, victory points, but if the prosperity is lower than the number of fully operational companies, then you can increase your prosperity by one. It's a motivation to increase the amount of companies that you have. By raising your prosperity, you get yourself more victory points. A uh, caveat on the fully operational companies is that it needs to have both workers. So even though a lot of the companies have optional working class workers, there has to be the working class worker on your company working for it to get the full benefit. So it is not fully operational with one worker. So this doctor's office is not a fully operational company, but this but this convenience store would be. So at the end of the game, the different teams get points for various accomplishments. Uh, the way that the middle class will score at the end of the game is first of all, to get victory points based on the resources that you still have. So you get one for every two food, one for every three luxury, one victory point for every three healthcare and one victory point for every three education. So collecting those things is going to end up being a benefit to the uh, middle class player in the game. For each 15 in cash that the middle class player has, they also get another victory point. There's no cap on this number for this uh, team. So uh, hoarding a lot of money will also be beneficial to that player. And finally, policy B on the uh, political policies uh, table at the top of the board, getting those policies in the middle will benefit the middle class player. So one victory point for one, uh, two of them on the B uh, would be three points, three of them on the B would be six, four would be 10, and five would be 15. So again, that looks like if they were to have all the policies in their benefit, it would look like this. And that is what they would go for to maximize their points. So that's the working class player. They have a lot of freedom and choices in how they approach their gameplay. They could emphasize uh, getting goods and becoming more prosperous and growing their army of workers or they could put a huge emphasis on trying to uh, produce and make a lot of money with their production. So there's a lot of freedom and choice within that. Uh, when it comes to elections, they can really try to play both sides to uh, benefit themselves over the other sides that are competing with one another. And that is the working class.